Hey everybody, my name is Gatemo, welcome back for a new series, brand new game boys, actually it's not really a new game, I'm not exactly sure when it came out, but it's a recent game, that's what I can say about it. I'm super excited to play this game for you guys, uh, this game is called Suzerain, I'm really excited to play this game for you. Uh, I heard some good news about this game, it seems like the type of game where it's a map game, right, but you get to basically... Uh, play as a suzerain. It's exactly in the t uh, in the title. You get to play as a suzerain, manage politics, manage all types of stuff. We're gonna jump in into game without further ado. I don't really know what's waiting for us. We're gonna see full screen graphics, master volume. Don't care too much. Yep. Let's head back. Seems like everything's fine. And by the way, as I'm recording, I got my PS5. Finally, I got it. I was man I managed to buy it after putting my uh, name on VIP list. Uh, so I got the PS5. We're gonna be able to do a couple of videos on it Maybe see what the difference between the games and all what uh, what happens when you change between games Maybe try to console out a little bit boys. I'm not gonna really play too much with it Just because I don't feel like there's any games right now on console that are really appealing to me Those games are probably gonna all come out uh, during October and September, so we're gonna have to wait for that, but at least I got the console now, so that's good But let's jump on into the game right here and see what this is all about. All right, let's see what we got 1908 Kingdom of Stordland you open your eyes to this world you came from There we go. So it's actually an RPG kind of you interact you've got different types of settings boys a new beginning you start somewhere and you choose where you come from and everything. It's really an awesome uh, way to start it up. So, uh, do we want to be... We uh, come from a wealthy family in the city of Lachavan, a middle-income uh, family in the city of Allsort, or an impoverished family in the city of Dare. Uh, Dare. So, do we want to be low-class, middle-class, or wealthy-class? Uh, I'm going to put myself in the middle middle class boys why not like i am in real life i'll put myself just like real life middle class a little bit more healthier than a middle class actually i'm actually um considered in canada at least to be uh, wealthier than the middle class not in the wealthy class but in, in i'm in the middle kind of so uh that's kind of a, i'm considered to be so i'm just gonna stick to the middle class i guess makes for a bit more of a story when you come down from uh from the middle right or the uh, the the bottom boys a better story then so your parents named you Anton as the only child of a vigilant civil servant you lived quite an ordinary uh, ordinary childhood life was not that bad you were lucky enough to attend a well-known public school exactly ba basically uh, boring boring life boys but frequent fights broke out to uh, at the rain family home these made you feel uneasy. I already like how this is going, boys. So we're going all the way to September the 9th of 1923. During a, uh, a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced this historic revolution. Uh, the kingdom was no more. The Republic of Sordland was born. No more kingdom? You did not fully understand. You were happy that you had the day off. Uh, you were somewhat worried. Uh, I was... I'm gonna say I'm, I'm kind of worried because with change as a kingdom to something else, there's always bad stuff happening. The transition is all, uh, not always that good, boy. All right, so 1926. After graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several studies. You chose law economics or history history all day boys i'm a lover i'm a sucker for history i love history all right so during the first year you attended a lecture with david witchy he was a well-known diplomat from the foreign ministry and the son of the president after observing the hall in silence he explained with the real politic uh, is important for a successful foreign policy he argued that a strategy based on practical and material factors would be much more successful in reaching Swordland's ambitions. You agreed in his principle and principle. You questioned what you were being taught. Your only concern was passing the exams. I'm gonna question what I am being taught, boys. 
Or one thing you want to do is always que always question everything that people tell you. Uh, it doesn't mean don't believe to don't believe them or don't or, or argue with them. It just means question their thoughts so they can question so they can like keep evolving. All right, the, these people gotta keep evolving and stuff. You can't stick to the main story all the time. Otherwise, it's, it's becoming corrupt in there and stuff like that right we don't want history to become corrupt or become washed up right we want history to keep evolving and having new types of eyes on it on the situation and stuff like that so i'm gonna question may 22nd 20 uh, 1927 looks like uh, the germans are here boys uh, seems like it might be that soldiers enter the campus in the evening ahead of the first election Many were in shock as the uniformed men created the security cordon and started arresting the teachers. Sounds like Germany, all right? A group of students, uh, students started gathering in protest. Along with your best friend, Peter, uh, Peter, you decided to protest with the students, avoid any confrontation. I'm actually going to avoid confrontation. I don't want to be in trouble here. All right, I am going to question things. But I'm gonna, not going to start trouble, alright? I'm the last guy who's going to start the trouble. Alright, you heard a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Lutheran declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. You quickly made your way towards the dormitory, avoiding the scene. You did exactly as they said. Exactly. I'm just going to follow the rules for now. I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to do anything stupid, boys, to make, give my... Uh, Get myself uh, in trouble right there. As you entered your room, you heard screams coming from the outside. You tried to bury yourself under the sheets. You tried to go out to to see. Heard screams, huh? Well, I'm I'm gonna go out and see what's what's going on here. But the soldiers locked the door. It was a gloomy year. Okay, I guess they probably shot everyone. I I'm not sure. I guess the 10th of October, 1927, the coup. Uh, split the students into two groups and caused frequent fights. Torture and imprisonment of any opposing voice became a daily routine in there. You didn't want to say, stay idle and decided to join. A human rights groups, a student council, a political debate group. A human rights groups for sure. I'm gonna join them. I think nobody should ever be, uh, you should never be allowed to silence anybody. Everybody's got the right to say what they want, boys. It's just how it is, in my opinion. The group heavily protested against the, de against the deteriorating human rights situation in Sordon. You contributed it into a thorough uh, discuss uh, discussions on how to protect and expand freedoms. In one of the meetings, Pietro introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Sordish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her intelligence or beauty. Her diligence. What does that even mean? What does diligence even mean? I'm not like, I'm French. I don't know what these words, boys. The hell. I'll say her smart, I guess, because she's smart. A, political char a politically charged environment led you to join the Red Youth, the Socialists, the Nationalists, or stay away from any political organization. All right, so it's, it's either I'm going on the right or on the left. If I'm going to go anywhere, I'm going to go on the left, boys. To be honest, i am always been like uh, a kind of a socialist. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to jo uh, join the, so the Red Youth here. All right, so the radio relayed that the communist general Rickert surrounded uh, Lutheran and his troops demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Uh, Sordland plunged into chaos. All right, that's something. Another civil war, boys. Rickard's sudden attack caused more instability in the country. But compared to the fascists, he was a real socialist. Exactly. This convinced you to participate in a support march. You were chanting freedom, equality, and solidarity. Workers and of the world unite. Uh, bring down the fascists. I don't really care about the fascists that much. I think freedom, equality, and solidarity is the main reason as to why I would be a socialist. There we go, boys. You were marching under the protection of Rickard's soldiers. The students opposing the group gathered a few hundred meters in front of you. Many nationalists were among them. You knew uh, something was going to happen. You stayed. Uh, I left. 
if something's about to happen, if something is gonna broke out, I'm not gonna be in the middle of it. I don't wanna be killed. I don't wanna be uh, do anything stupid, boys. I wanna be jerked into it. All right, I I'll just leave. The clash is escalated into a full-blown full civil war. The Aurors made you is isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope, and lo and love grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos must end. So I, I, I fell in love with Monica, I guess, boys. 1929, Republic of Swordland, the charismatic colonel uh, Tarkin's soul orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Swordland Party and ran as presidential candidate. In the first ever elections, you voted for the United Swordland Party? Uh, you did not vote. I'm not, I'm going to say I did not vote, boys. Considering I was a socialist and I was for all freedom and stuff, I consider the fact that I'm probably ne never going to vote for a guy like that. Uh, USP won the election by a large majority. After uh, gradu graduation, you kept seeing Manika and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. Of course, they're enrolling me. Okay, it was time to serve your national duty. All right, then I'm fighting for somebody I probably don't even want to fight for. February, uh, February 1930, Bergia region. So probably Belgic boys. They're changing the names a little bit. Devastating uh, civil war broke out in the neighboring country, Wilhelm. Uh, the dis uh, distinguished major, Lozef Link, uh, Linkshia, ordered you to lead your squad on a bo uh, border patrol mission. Uh, it was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of uh, Gumrin outpost. You could see your breath. All right, then. Very cold, boys. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visibility was too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in formation and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You escorted them back. Let them slip through. I'm just gonna let them slip through. I I'm not gonna create trouble if they are they're refugees. I'm not gonna shoot them or escort them back. I'll let them go through. It doesn't matter to me, boys. So after the patrol, major the major arrived with anger and immediately relieved you of your command, calling you a disappointment. But what can I do, man? I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna kill anybody. One of your squad members had reported your actions after several months of scrubbing the floor as a punishment. Okay. Uh, your duties ended, uh, uh, ended and you went back to civilian life. Well, at least I found a way to get, get back from the military service. That was pretty easy. Uh, you and Monica decided to share your lives together. After receiving the blessing of your, uh, her parents, the ceremony was held in Oshol, uh, Old Sword. So I just got married, I guess. All right. During the same year, you worked hard to secure a high-paying job at the government, uh, governing United Swordland Party. It was much more difficult to start your career on a good foot because of the refugee incident, but you still managed. Okay, all right. Uh, working for the uh, ruling party was the easiest path to power. The fi uh, financial compensation was too great to pass up. It was the best opportunity to change the country for the better. I think to change the country for the better, I think, yeah. I'm not going to be power hungry. So you became a foreign policy assistant to one of the more experienced members of assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late at work, reviewing dozens of foreign policy plans. You were climbing the ladder. I'm climbing fast, boys. Let's see what we got. 1933 uh, of September. Soul strengthened to the Republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking out for the country as the massive economic uh, boom continued. The people were the happiest they had been in a decade. Election time came and it was decided. President Tarkin was elected once more. Of course, I mean, with the economic boom and everything, uh, it kind of makes sense that that will happen, boys. All right, so 1934, the preparations of the most comprehensive uh, trade agreement with Anola was a comp a occupying most of your personal time. But your significant uh, contribution uh, to the trade talks triggered an invitation to meet the president uh, who offered you a key position. 
You were to become the youngest member of assembly. You accepted right away. You accepted with doubts. I'm going to accept with doubts. I don't know if I really want to become a member of the assembly. Uh, I don't even know if I wanted to become a part of the political uh, side of things in the first place, you know. Jumping to 38, so four years later, as the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies, so you brought Pieter as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, uh, provided a brief moment of joy and relief. You sacrificed work to spend time with your family, sacrificed family to improve your position in the party. Not much of a family guy, boys. I'm gonna be honest. Uh, not much of a family guy, but if I was, if I was having a child, um, I think I would sacrifice my work. Uh, I don't think I would screw over my child for the work and stuff. It doesn't seem that important. Let's sacrifice my work. I've got good ethics, boys. I, I'm not gonna screw my anybody over. 1941. Uh, during your absence, Peter found trustworthy contacts and strength of your position in the party. At the same time, president, the president increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to grow, cause strife within the, uh, the party. Really? Him having an ego. Who would have now? Who would have thought, boys? We're jumping to 45 now, four years later. Uh, how old are we? I mean, I think we were born in 1908, right? So that's a... Uh, that's an interesting right there. How old are we right now? I think we're in the 30s or something. The president barely secured a majority in the election against the opposition leader. So, uh, third re-election for him, boys. Holy. Starting to sound like a Palpatine type of thing right there. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for United uh, Southern Party Congress became louder as the leadership struggled the struggle started to brew. You watched uh, from the sidelines, kept supporting the president, joined the interna internal uh, position. I'm just going to stay on the sidelines. I don't really care too much about what happens. I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm only interested in myself and my family, boys. Nothing else. Uh, 1946, July. The, content, the contender for party leadership was uh, Ewald Alfonso. A reformist and talented businessman magnate with a growing popularity within the party. Meanwhile, in a desperate effort to secure votes before the Congress, the president was meeting party members one by one. He approached you as well, alright. He approached me, boys. What do you want? He offered you the position of Minister of Foreign Affairs and Trade in the next government if you backed him in the upcoming vote. He's offering him a vote. Look, that sounds like that sounds like a bad deal to me. Um, I know what's next for the foreign minister. Usually, the foreign minister becomes the president. Boys, next. That's usually what happens. I'm not interested in that. I'm not. I'm gonna refuse. This is just a no deal right there. I, I'm not just gonna vote for you. All right. I'm not gonna get bought off like that so easily. You're not gonna get my vote. All right, 1946, August, the party congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Sword and would be, were decorating every possible spot. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists, and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. You voted for Tarkin Saul or for Herwald? I think it's time for a new leader, boys. I don't like the fact that he's going for a fourth re-election, re boys. That is not a good thing. We don't want that. So let's let's vote for the new guy. September 1st, 1946. The efforts bore fruit as the continuous uh, contentious leadership vote for was won by Hewald. There we go. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirements for uh, retirement for politics. He knew the structure he had established was to stay. The country had become increasingly authoritarian. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes usually when you get uh, to three, for three terms, boys. Uh, you were happy that Sol was uh, finally leaving. Were troubled by the departure. Didn't care about who was in charge. I just don't care. As long as it's someone that knows what he's doing, boys. 1946, uh, once again, October 15 this time around. A month later, your daughter was born. So I got a daughter now. Monica named her Dina. She motiv motivated you during a tumultuous uh, period in the party. The general elections were approaching. 
the United Sordland Party was under the new leadership of Hewald. You joined the party effort and campaigned for him? You did it? Yeah, I did my best not to help him. I I didn't work with the last president. What makes you think I'm going to work with a new one? Just because I voted for him doesn't mean I'm going to help him out. 1949, boys, during the gener uh, general election, the main opposition leader was embroiled in a, a sex scandal with his secretary, diminishing their chances. The extensive privatization program proposed by Ewell secured an election victory for the United uh, Party. Over the next years, you did your best in order to make Sordon a better place, tried all that was necessary to climb up the ladder, de dedicated yourself to the party and the success. I'm going to just say I did my best to make uh, Swordland a better place you know, overall. I think that's the best option. Thinking about my country first, boys, not about the party. That's always what you want to do. 1951, the presidency of Ewald saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic recession. The other parties announced their bids for the 1953 uh, election, but the unfair system impaired all opposition efforts to win. Uh, you thought that your party could not survive another crisis? Were worried about the economic recession? Worried that your reputation would be tarnished along with Al Alfonso? I think my reputation is going to be tarnished. I can't allow that to happen though. Together with Peter, your presence in the USP grew and you became the face of a new wing in the, par of a new wing in the party. Okay, so I created my own party, boys. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had, uh, had come. Alright, so I'm becoming just like... I basically cooed him. I'm, uh, I did a coup myself. Um, you blamed Alfonso for the crisis on television. Bribed and exhorted uh, Alfonso's inner circle. Advise Alfonso... I'm just going to advise him to step down. This is the best course of option for him. I'm not going to publicly wash him. I'm just going to tell him... You know, just chill on your side. Try to make this as good as possible on your side because this is a cluster right now. All right, so I'm just going to advise him to step down. On January 1943, he didn't take your advice seriously and started to reshuffle his cabinet. But most of his inner circle abandoned him. Then listen to me, boys. Your diplomatic attitude made the party vote you in as the leader. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Peter as your running mate. It was your turn. Well, I guess I'm the next one, boys. October 1943. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms, preserve national values. I am very much for my nation as well. I am going to do anything for my nation, so I'm... Say for Canada versus Quebec, for example, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say for most of the time I'm not gonna say I'm a Canadian. I'm gonna say I'm a I'm I'm a Quebecer, you know. I'm I'm from Quebec, not Canada, so I'm th I'm that type of guy. So I'm gonna uh, say and preserve national values. That's the most important thing for me. All right, so great nation of Sordon, due to the incompetent leadership, enemies both internal and external are influencing our glorious nation. Today, more than ever. We need to unite under one flag and protect our values. Great she, Swordland. There we go. The broadcast ended, boys. We need to unite one nation. All right. One nation together, boys. November, one election day. On election day, millions went out to cast their votes. It was time to face the truth. Will I be elected or not? We'll see. Chapter 1, President Reign. So let's see what's going to happen. We're entering chapter one, boys. So that's basically was the whole prologue. The whole thing was the prologue right there, which is very fantastic. I really liked how it works. They give you the prologue and everything. It's I, I really like that. So now we can choose the way we look. So we are the fourth only, the, only the fourth president. Remember that. So uh, we are more on the nationalist side, but remember, I'm still a socialist. So I'm still on the left side. It's just I'm all for my nation. I'm going to protect my nation no matter what. So hairstyle, let's see what we got. I'm just going to, there we go. That's going to be my picture, boys. I'm going to be Anton Rain. It's my picture right here as much as I could do, like kind of real life a little bit. The beard, the glasses, and I guess the hair. I don't really have my hair, so I'm just going to put it as if I was 
putting gel on my hair or something like that, boy. So let's do that. You will not be able to change uh, how I look. That's fine. I'll uh, do it that way. So as Inton Rain, in, uh, you made pr many promises to the people of Sordon in order to gain their votes. They must be considered very carefully. So I made promises. Uh, Sordon's economy has been had been based on planned doctrine since its formation until the former president, Hewald, enacted free market reforms. Now the country finds itself in between two different economic systems. So do we want to keep the free market, which I think is a good thing. I think free market's definitely the way I want to go, boys. It's very important to trade with your neighbors as much as possible. You don't want to be... Uh, closed economy, I don't like that. I want to be free market. So promote planned economy. I'm just going to say free market. There we go. Uh, diplomacy, the intensif intensify the intensifying global rivalry between cap capitalist Arcasia in the West and communist United Contena in the East is op opening new diplomatic uh, di new diplomatic possibilities. Sordon could take steps to align itself closer to uh, one. I'm say I'm I'm gonna say uh, neither. I'm gonna be whatever I want to be. Um, I'm gonna be my own party, my own my own type of ideology i don't want to be stuck on the left i don't want to be stuck on the right i want to have a little bit of both boys we're gonna take a bit of both we're gonna mix it together and we're gonna see how that goes all right so neither uh in recent years bullish or bloodish wizek and Angolan immigrants flocked to certain due to re relaxed immigration uh, laws enacted by Elod. Uh, as a result, tensions in between swords and immigrants have uh, uh, been increasing. Keep immigration relaxed, tighten the immigration. Big time. Now, that is one thing in real life that I'm all about, boys. I'm fine with immigration, but it's got to be tightened. I, I do not want it loose at all. You, you got to stick the... Like, you got to make sure that the immigrants know uh, everything about your lifestyle they live like you like they live like you they work like you they speak like you they do everything like you i don't want them to be different i don't want them to uh to be uh, like to refuse straight up to be like us you know that's that's definitely not a thing i want so i work to tighten immigration make sure that these people that are uh, illegal and are well uh, like are willing to really become one with the nation i want these people i don't want the other people that are just gonna half-ass it you know so next up election promises so team for term focus uh we have also promised to focus on a certain extensive subject within our first term the people expect us to solve negative situations within the topic while providing an overall improvement to re related policies well that's usually how it goes you know you try and do as much good as you can within the, the limited time you got. But what do we want to work on the most? Health, education, law, or military? I don't care too much about military. Law don't care too much. Education and health is very uh, important. Uh, healthcare would be very important. I don't even know if we have it. I don't think we have it. So it would be important to probably uh, get that in there. Our education, always upgrade education, is a strong suit for me as well. Education is very important. So since the 1940s, the difference of service quality between urban and rural hospital has been getting increasingly worse, and the average life expectancy has dropped uh, significantly. Or the lack of schools, teachers, and even classroom equipment in certain areas causes massive gaps in previously robust education system. I'm going to go for education. I think education is very important, especially for the young child, the next generation. They need to know how to do things, probably. They need to know. They need to be better than us every single time. So let's do done. There we go. Uh, your promise will be remembered and they will have consequences. Let's do it. That's my promises. I'm, I'm going to work on the education. All right. Two weeks have passed since we won the election. Let's see what's going to happen, boys. So we got a lot of stuff we can do. We're going to look into all of that for the next video. We got the prologue for the first one. We made our 
uh, our budget, we have our budget, we have our wealth right now, personal wealth, economy for the state. We're doing all right. So uh, we'll see what's going on, boys, uh, next up. So remember to leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy the video. I'll see you guys for the next one. Keep it easy.